exercise 5-7, we have to do some figuring before we can do some figuring. They tell us that they provide services on account for 160000 Well, we don't know for sure, but that sounds like a number we might need. And then they tell us that cash collections throughout the year were 110000 Well, again, they haven't told us, but I'm guessing 110000 is important too. And then they say that we estimate the 25% of the uncollected. Aha, uh -huh, we did need that after all. We need that 50,000 balance of uncollectibles. Will not be collected. So, we need to take 50,000, multiply by 25%, come up with 12,500. That's 25 percent. I think now we've done all the figuring, now we can do the accounting. So the first thing it says is record the allowance for bad debt, the allowance for uncollectibles. So our bad debt expense is 1,000 or 12,500, excuse me, and our allowance for uncollectibles is 12,500. Now, remember, that's how much we expect not to collect. We might collect all of that, we might collect none of that, we might not collect more than that. It's our estimate for the allowance for future uncollectible accounts. Next it says you need to know the definition of accounts receivable at net. That's what that's really saying. Because the rules are we have to present accounts receivable at net realizable value. So our total accounts receivable is right there, 50,000. So we're telling the world that our customers owe us $50,000. We're also telling the world that we don't expect to collect 12,500 of it. Therefore, our accounts receivable at net is face value or full value minus the allowance for uncollectibles, 37,500. That's our expected net realizable value of our accounts receivable. FASB says we have to show accounts receivable at the full cost, we have to show our allowance for doubtful accounts, and we have to show accounts receivable at net.